Hey everybody, welcome back. It's business, and uh, this is a Petro Pavlovsk video, and uh, I'm not really sure what to call it or whatever. It's a work in progress video, and it will be the last one that I will be able to do because there are changes to the CC program that will unfortunately affect you guys uh, to to some degree, and. Um, We'll talk about that here in a second, and uh, along with the ship itself, and perception, and everything else. But I did want to say I hope you guys are um, being safe and being mindful of <laughs> the the washing your hands and social distancing stuff going on uh, with the, the coronavirus. But I really hope that you're not terribly affected by it, and um, that everybody's safe, of course. Uh, this is a fucked up time that we're we're experiencing and um unfortunately it's it, it's going to be around for a while so yeah we'll see where this leads but um anyways back to the video here so i'm generally going to avoid discussing too much about the ship specifics um you know they're I, I basically the the important thing is that this is a moskva replacement the moskva will turn into a premium you will get the Alexander Nevsky, and you will have to research the Riga, the Tier 9 heavy cruiser, and also the Petra Pavlovsk. Um, well, actually, I don't really know what the deal is with the Riga, how you get that, but you'll, you'll probably have to research it. I don't know. They've got it all drawn out on their website, but basically, you're getting the Alexander Nevsky if you have the, uh, the Moskva. So that's the important thing. You'll get the rapid-fire 180mm... Uh, um the cruiser not this so you just have to free xp or just you know get regular experience for it so um anyways it also has 220 millimeter shells that have uh improved ricochet angles um they kind of tone that down a little bit um but you could still there's a few instances here where you're going to see that that is something that it's clearly a benefit still. Uh, these shells have incredible shell velocity and remarkable shell penetration. So to put it into perspective for you, um, people think that the Hindenburg is such a phenomenal AP ship, and it is. Um, it doesn't have outright penetration though, and by that I mean at 100 meters, so 0.1 kilometers, it has 451 millimeters of shell pen. That's what this has at over 14 kilometers. So that means that you're able to Citadel, technically, on paper, uh, Yamato's and uh, the Kremlin at that range. <laughs> and uh, I have sunk a Citadel on a Minotaur at 18.4 kilometers. I have reliably, consistently Citadeled uh, Thunderers and Conquerors at over 15 kilometers, uh, actually in a couple cases, 16. and a few other instances like that. So this is a batshit crazy gun-oriented ship, and that sounds weird to say, like, oh, it's gun-oriented, no shit it is. It's so strong on the guns. Now, you're not really going to see that with this clip. This was actually, I think, one of my first games that I played with it, and I just got super unlucky against this uh, Thunderer Conqueror. Yeah, it looks like a Thunderer. So um, regardless, though, well, trust me, the citadels will be your i don't think there's ever going to be a, a video again where i have this many citadels from start to finish let's just put it that way and uh just wait till the last one but there are there are aspects to this ship that are really quite strong uh the 360 degree turrets are actually one of those things that i i don't expect to change at all because it would require some sort of modeling change and uh, that's just not going to happen so um with that said, the, the turret traverse is slow, and I think it, it actually works really well. That's actually one of the most fair part of the ships, oddly enough, um, because if it had any faster turret traverse, it would be just ridiculously broken uh, on, on just that aspect of it. Um, so again, you see the, the bounce angles there. Um, I think if... I'm pretty sure I've been in a very similar situation against the Moskva before, uh, prior to the changes to the uh, the bounce angles, because they kind of nerfed that a, a few degrees, um, where I did like two or three times that much damage with uh, with that same situation or, or nearly that same angle. So, anyways, um, 
you know, the AA reaches out to over six and a half kilometers, which is nice, but the AA isn't really all that good unless you're getting flak because no AA is actually all that good unless you're getting flak. And um, then what else? Uh, the, the overall rudder shift is pretty amazing when you're using uh, the, the setup that I've got, which is propulsion mod and the steering gear mod too. Um, so, you know, the the bigger reduction on the 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 rudder shift and it, it's it's beautiful man like it handles really well uh, it's got a gigantic turning radius of course it's a russian ship of course it has that um but there are you know at the very least there's that sort of caveat and uh, also that the citadel is raised up out of the water i've been dev struck in this trying to do maneuvers up close against uh, battleships um <laughs> like I, I did before with the, the Kremlin and Yamato in the first clip. Uh, it can happen. It has happened. I've been 38, 40k uh, in this a few times, and, you know, whatever. It's it's still a cruiser. It's going to happen, and especially at Tier 10, it doesn't matter what ship you're in, you're going to get the ship knocked out of you at some point. Uh, there is also the other aspect of the ship of uh, the dispersion, which it's supposed to be bad at long range, and like the Russian battleships, and improve... Uh, when you get closer to uh, the enemy ship, so um, that's actually a feature that I really like with this because it's not a sit back and snipe type of ship. It, it really makes a lot of sense with this because the HE isn't good. It is actually really good against uh, light targets. You can drop, uh, you know, 6,500 to 8,000 uh, damage if you're getting all your shells on target uh, pretty reliably against a destroyer. Um, or obviously a, a light cruiser, something that, that yields the uh, the HE shell pen. But it, it's not, it's absolutely not an HE ship at range or that sort. Um, I had one match where I think I fired 156 HE shells, and that is, I think, still more than all of my matches with this combined that I fired HE. So it, it's almost strictly an AP ship, and especially with these bounce angles and stuff, it, it just doesn't really do that well at range uh, once you're talking about, like, I mean, you'll get the odd Citadel against, like, a broadside battleship at, uh, you know, 14, 15 kilometers, maybe uh, one or two Citadels against a cruiser, but you're going to be doing a lot of straddling, and uh, again, you know, this, this was not a typical situation there with the uh, the Moskva uh, getting six citadels on him and again that uh, that angle that he had I still had six citadels against him which is crazy so anyhow um, you know I, I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what the, the ship is but not really go into much more beyond that because the gameplay is going to speak for itself and that's kind of the thing is that when we're looking at a ship and we're considering whether or not it's you know, strong, underpowered, or way too blatantly overpowered and all that stuff. Um, one thing that there's a tendency of doing is focusing too much on the scorecards as opposed to the context of a situation. If I showed you the scorecard of a, like the, the first clip where I got 16 citadels, um, it, people would be like, wow, that's obviously really, really strong without actually really considering or even asking the question of, well, what type of combat were you in? You know, this is to me a brawler ship through and through. And yes, I got a oddly angled Citadel there, um, which I've done against the Montana at over 18 kilometers. I don't know how the hell that happened. Reliably, I've been able to get the Thunder Conqueror Citadel that uh, 15, 16 kilometers and obviously under. Uh, Yamato have been able to do at 12 and Kremlin uh, 10 and under. So uh, reliably. So anyways, I think part of the problem that we are looking at here with a ship like this is that simply because it's Russian, it, it's going to be considered and deemed overpowered regardless. Uh, this ship has to give up a lot in order to get into situations where it's going to capitalize off of people who are just terrible at close range. And which is to say most people do not manage themselves very well in close range. This is something that I've been exploiting. I've made it a point to exploit. I mean, look at any of the Minotaur matches I've, I've posted up. I mean, it, that's my bread and butter. I love it. And... It's, it's amazing to, to get in close, uh, for me at least, and uh, to, to rip people's ships apart because it's fucking awesome. And, and that's to me where the adrenaline in this game 
still exists even after five years of playing this it still gets my heart pumping and all that stuff like this situation for instance i had no idea what to expect with this republic coming around the corner um you know if i get wiped off the the map or whatever the case is but anyways um and the thing is if if i had these same results in a minotaur nobody would say shit because they know that the only way to to really get that is to be up close so you know yes this can reach out and touch people and just tickle their citadels in ways that i probably shouldn't even show you on youtube uh not without some parental guidance suggestions or that sort of thing but uh the the point is that the context of how these results are achieved and in this case 21 citadels um i mean that that was all you know close range and forcing broadsides or people letting broadsides be had and a lot of people just really really struggle with being anything but broadside to to things that are just serious serious threats to them because they don't really have spatial awareness so is it the ship's fault or is it a you know a player base issue uh so on and so forth i mean that's a rabbit hole that i'm not gonna fucking go down and i really don't want you to go down either because it's it's a rhetorical question i promise you i'm not actually asking that so the the point is that i i think everybody's really quick to jump the gun on oh shit this is so broken and overpowered he got 25 citadels business got 36 citadels blah 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 look at the situation though what was forced what was created and what was given and i know like the, the the hardest thing to do is to actually try to keep all that type of stuff in mind when you're discussing you know a, a game or results or whatever um because you always want to try to break it down into the most simplest uh, simplistic form to be able to discuss it more easily and unfortunately in a game full of variables you don't really have that uh ability to really do that because you're, you're leaving something out, whether intentionally or unintentionally, and uh, this is fucking hilarious, guys. I mean, we already triple sit him earlier, we gotta sit there, and he's staying broadside, he's lit. I, I can't make this shit up. He actually messaged me after the match and complained that what I did was fucking bullshit. One, he's in his Smolensk, and then two, what's bullshit is him expecting a different outcome from what he was doing because you know he does that almost every goddamn game <laughs> and I'm like what do you expect man so uh again context is key if if that guy posts something where he's like oh man i got you know blapped off the map by the by the petra pavlovsk um you know we really need to change this ship well what were you doing you know it's it's there's just, oh uh, god, it's it's so difficult, it's such a back and forth um, with with people on this because, you know, I, I don't believe damage is the be all end all and yet you'll have people and very prominent people just only focus on the damage as if that actually fucking mattered at all. If it did, then we wouldn't have anybody with over 250,000, 300,000, 400,000 damage still losing their matches. You know, it's it's just it all it all depends on what what's going on in a given situation and a given match and stuff like that. It's just not uh, there's no easy answer to anything, and all these stats can be manipulated easily, anyways. Especially if you're in a division um, or you know there's a concerted effort <laughs> with with uh, trying to to make sure that your your PR rating and all that shit is uh, is up to par. You know. It, I just, I don't subscribe to that type of mentality. I fucking hate it. Um, you know, the, the only thing about stats that I care about is that generally you can tell how good or how bad somebody is based off of where they're at at a given point in the match. And that goes back to the whole, you know, if you, like the, the people that post their 300,000 damage losses or whatever, be like, oh man, I did so much. And they've only got like, you know, uh, their the ribbons for fire uh and achievements for witherer of course and high caliber because they've only focused four fucking ships for an entirety of 20 minutes <laughs> and that's all they did and apparently that's supposed to be 
you know, that's supposed to be a carry. And, you know, it's people never putting themselves in situations where they they actually have the opportunity to win. They just think that damage is their only contribution. And uh, because probably it is because they can't manage themselves in, you know, other situations. And, uh, and again, going back to the ship being balanced, unbalanced or whatever, this guy has been broadside for five salvos. And yes, I've done damage to him. But should I have done more, or should I have done less? Because I think it turns from a question of like people thinking that this is power from instead of power creep, it's power leap. And I would agree quite a bit in in certain respects. Like the the outright shell pen of this is is fucking insane, and I don't think it belongs in a cruiser at all. And I also think that the like the Stalingrad that that level of pen is completely absurd and doesn't belong in the game at all for a quote-unquote cruiser but yeah we'll see how all that shapes up uh with whatever they decide to do with the ship so i'm, I'm not really banking on too much being changed so i don't think anybody would be surprised by that but um anyways so regarding the uh the new cc um embargo and, and that sort the what I, I really want to talk about there is that uh, you know wargaming has brought this up and apparently we've affected their bottom line enough uh, to have them essentially muzzle us so uh, until a week or two before a premium ship is is available we cannot talk about it we can't show anything about it unless it shows up in like a dev blog uh, we can talk about what's posted in the dev blog but we cannot discuss anything beyond that. And um, I think part of this is a combination of... God, there's a lot of things going on here. I'm just going to be honest, though. Um, the leak, the leaks that uh, have come from an ST, a privateer, a, a CC, a WG employee, I don't have any goddamn clue who. Um, it doesn't matter who it came from. The fact of the matter is there were a couple leaks that kind of undermined things a little bit. And... Um, you know, that was, that was over the final six months of last year, and there was a fallout from that, and I definitely think this is part of that. Um, I think it's also because, you know, the Slava, uh, they wanted to release that ship, and they got so much negative feedback, and they've also had so much negative feedback from other uh, things that they've wanted to release, and they just happened to throw them out, like... Um, actually, the Yahagi, the Veribus Unitas, I mean, that one's a great example. Uh, that ship, really just, what a failure. Uh, you know, and the, the dispersion is really good, but undersized guns, terrible armor, uh, incredibly slow, no fucking AA to speak of, and it's tier 5. So, I mean, it gets, it gets absolutely shit on by the same tier ships, let alone you know, tier 6 or 7, which just absolutely ravaged that ship. And, uh, you know, that's a really good example, because you couldn't put that at tier 4 with the dispersion that it has. But the problem is, if you take that really good dispersion away, then nobody's going to fucking buy it, because everybody wants overpowered ships to either complement the skill they already have, or to make up for the skill that they lack. And from Wargaming's side, I understand this is the eternal conflict, but... When you're using the CCs to basically be part of that system of checks and balances that uh, prevents, uh, I, and even then I know it wasn't intentional, but um, to prevent these overpowered uh, ships from getting into the game, like to use us as a filter, uh, in a manner of speaking, then you're probably not doing a very good job of producing the ships anyways or understanding what the game actually needs. It still goes back to Wargaming and what they're trying to sell people and where they're trying to bring the game. Because we don't know the latter, but we can pretty much infer from the, the former. They obviously want to sell us ships, and they obviously want to sell us the bigger, expensive, higher tier ships. But, you know, I mean, in the end, any anything like this, it just hurts you guys. And that's my problem with it, because I don't really give a shit about streaming these work in progress ships anymore it, it is what it is i i can play offline i don't really mind that but for you guys to only have a week or two uh to make a decision a an expensive decision on the ship a digital good and to have that uh, to have that playing against your fear of missing out that's that's pretty fucked up 
and I, I really don't agree with that, but we're going to see how this rolls for the next patch or two, uh, and I don't know what to say beyond that, but uh, thank you for watching today, guys. I hope you're being safe, and I will hopefully see you back here soon. Take care, everybody.